Hello there, Drew Hanish with another whiskey comparison video from Whiskey Lore. And today I am going to be tasting two Isla whiskeys. One is a repeat. And the reason it's a repeat is because I forgot that I had done a tasting of Corey Vrecken against Wee Beastie not too long ago. And so I put it out there and said I was going to come up with a matchup to go along with it. So I thought, well, you know, actually, it'd be interesting to try it against a different whiskey. That was an Ardbeg versus an Ardbeg. This would be an Ardbeg versus a Brucolade, which is the maker of Port Charlotte, heavily peated. So this is a 10-year whiskey that I'm going to do a tasting on. And, man, I am just not smart. I put two of my favorite whiskeys against each other. And it's... It's like picking your favorite child, as they say. Uh, tough to figure out which direction I'm going to go, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about each of these. Now, you'll see that name, Cory Vrecken. And what is Cory Vrecken? Well, the cool thing about Ardbeg is that they tend to name their core range after places. Places that relate in some way either to Isla or to the whiskey itself. So, like, for instance, Ugadal is the name of their water source, Loch Ugadal, and, um, and Ano is a little peninsula that jets out on Isla that actually protects Lagavulin, Lafroig, and Ardbeg from the Atlantic Ocean and the storm surges that come in from there. And so, Cory Vrecken is actually a whirlpool. And you will see here a picture of Isla, and um, they actually show Isla there and Scotland up above. But um, if you look at this, you would have Ardbeg's down there. Over on this side is the Isle of Jura, and up here is where the Cory Vrecken Whirlpool is. Depending on who you ask, the Cory Vrecken Whirlpool is either the second largest in the world, according to this box, third largest in the world according to Wikipedia, or I've seen as much as sixth largest in the world. But let's just say it is big. It's big enough that it can be, the roar of it can be heard from up to 30 miles away. And the water drops from 300 feet to 100 feet between its uh, lightest rotation to its most agitated. So. And if you listen to this week's episode of, of Whiskey Lore, I actually have a reading of a poem called The Kelpie of Cory Vrecken, which is about a situation that occurred. There's a couple of different um, stories that I cover in that episode. And one of them, which I find really funny, is deals with a, a king who is uh, trying to prove his, uh, in his strength, his endurance, whatever you want to say. Basically what he's done is he's sailed his ship out to the edge of Cory Vrecken. He's got three ropes. One of them is the hair of, uh, is, is basically the hair of virgins, the strongest, you know, gotta love these fables, the strongest rope you can possibly get is the hair of virgins. But the problem is, is that one of the virgins isn't actually a virgin, she lied, and the rope breaks, and he gets sucked into the whirlpool. So, I don't know, morals to these stories, uh, you don't have to work that one out for yourself. But, all right, so let's go through these different whiskeys and do some tastings on them. And like I say, these are two of my favorites. They're both high proof. Cory Vrecken is 57.1%, this bottle is, and 50% alcohol for the Port Charlotte heavily peated. Now something that you're going to run into when you look at peated malts or that you'll hear, especially if you go to Isla, uh, is PPM. And what does PPM mean? PPM means parts per million of what they call phenols. Now if you get technical about it, they're not necessarily phenols. I'm going to get into all of that sort of stuff. Anyway, I've, I've heard discussions on that and it gets really science heavy, probably a little too much for me. But 
it does kind of help you get a sense of how much peat smoke there is in each whiskey. So for a, a good example, Laphroaig is around 45 parts per million of phenols. So if you've had Laphroaig or you've heard about Laphroaig, you've heard people say, wow, really smoky whiskey. Well, Ardbeg actually, Ardbeg 10 is 55 ppm. And so is Corey Vrecken from what I have read. So it's actually got a little higher level. Uh, and Port Charlotte is actually at 40 ppm. So the one that's called heavily peated is actually the least peated between these two different whiskeys. So one thing to keep in mind about ppm is that that's what it is when it's barley. Once it goes through the distillation process, it doesn't really mean that you're going to get that same intensity. There's a lot of other variables going on here. This one, we don't know how long this is aged. We know this one is aged for 10 years. The type of wood could have an effect on the smoke. All sorts of things could. So use PPM as kind of a rough guideline. There are some circumstances, for instance, uh, Brucolade, who makes Port Charlotte, also makes something called Octomore. And Octomore, at the uh, 8.3 version, actually had a PPM of 309 going into uh, when, that, when that barley came out. And you would think, man, that is really intense. I have had cask strength Octomore, not that particular version, but I've had cast strength Octomore, so it's probably in the 200 plus range in PPM, maybe as low as 160, and it was cast strength, and the two actually work together. It's like you'd expect it to really bite from the alcohol, and you would expect it to be extremely overwhelming from the smoke side, but it wasn't. So, uh, like I say, PPM is something to just kind of use as a, as a rough guide. Corey Vrecken comes from ex-bourbon casks and from New French, and I guess it spends a little time in New French oak as well, whereas Port Charlotte has an interesting uh, way that it is aged. It's actually aged in three separate barrels, and then they marry them together, so they'll take 65% out of a first fill American bourbon barrel. First fill meaning that it came over had bourbon in it at one point, now it comes over here and the first fill of scotch in it, that's the first fill. That, so they use 65% first fill. They use 10% second fill. So that means one that's been used, a barrel that's been used for scotch twice. They'll use them up to three times, maybe even more, depends on the distillery, they can use those barrels up to 100 years. So uh, in, in some cases, just depends on the distillery. So we got 25% that's left and that other 25% comes from French wine casks, and it creates a really, really interesting flavor. Both of these are non-chill filtered and no color. Color is a bit of an issue with some of the whiskeys coming from Scotland, and there's a real trend to go away from color. I don't mind a really light colored whiskey. Um, it, there's, there's, there's a truth in that. So. Uh, Ah, Corey Vrecken. This one has, this one, the ashy smoke really does come through on this one. It's, um, it's like a, a campfire after the campfire's been put out. Kind of gives you a, um, there's a little earthiness in this, a little nuttiness as well on the nose, and a touch of medicinal, which is very, you know, you can get that in a lot of the coastal Isla whiskeys. Now that I think about it, just about all of them are on the coast. But I think the ones on the west coast of Isla tend to, and the south tend to get, get most of that effect. Mm -hmm. That's a really nice mouthfeel to it. Here's the thing. Ooh. The smoke just runs through your mouth um the peatiness comes out the earthiness actually comes out after you're you've swallowed it it's like all of a sudden this grassy earthy thing happens um there's pepper in there when they say it's turbulent on the package i think it's that pepperiness 
but there's so many different flavors that come at you when you drink this. This is a hard one to just sit there and taste it and pick everything out all at once. And I will definitely advise putting a little water in there and not because it's so strong, because I actually don't mind it at that strength, but mainly because mm, the nose changes. I get a little more of the sea salt in there and some lemoniness that comes out. Again, that ashy smoke is really going to be the, the star of the show on this one. Mm. Oh man, there's a nice oiliness to this. I like a nice big mouthful of this. This is not one of those you take a little bit. There's like a salty, meaty steak coming out. The lemon is there again. And then it finishes into this nice earthiness and, and, and smoke. Man, if you like smoke, this is a really nice whiskey. And I tasted this against all the other ones side by side that Art Bay made. Uh, Drum uh, 10 when I was there. Uh, even the 22 year. This was the most fascinating whiskey out of any that I tasted. Now, the hard part is... <laughs> Being able to taste something else after you taste Corey Vrecken, that is a challenge. So the first thing you notice when you jump over to Port Charlotte is that it is fruity. It is smoky. The smoke is underlying, but the first thing that hits my nose is like, oh man, it's almost, um, there's, there's almost like a... It, I want to say like a pear. It's a sweetness. It's not, I don't know if it's exactly pear, but man, there's a nice sweetness. And I wonder if that's coming from that wine cask. The smoke is lying underneath. This is one that actually I'm going to put a little water in right away too, because this one is very nice after you hit it with some water. I start getting like uh, dark chocolate. And like cherries and I picked out Vicks Vapor Rub. I think it's just kind of the, um, um, is a methanol, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a nasal clear, <laughs> but it's pleasant. It's pleasant. Smokiness is there, oh, a little toffee in there, a little lemon, a little vanilla, and raspberry. I get raspberry in this, but the smoke is always there. On the end, oh, there was that Vicks, Vicker, Vicks, Vicks Vapor, uh, forget it. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's there. There's a little apple on the finish, which is interesting, but um, I, I was looking for a word, and was it... Uh, Cizaz, I think that's it. I don't know. There's a, a term for when somebody walks by with a perfume. It's a French term. Somebody walks by with a perfume and that lingering smell. That's what the smoke does on this whiskey. It kind of lingers out and it actually kind of haunts your mouth. Um, haunts in a good way. Um, an, an aura of whiskey going on, of smoke going on around your mouth. So it is a really, really interesting whiskey. I will put it this way. If you want a really balanced whiskey, that's the one. Between the smoke and the fruits and the, the chocolate and all of those different flavors are in there. None of them are overly aggressive, but they're pleasant. And then if you want one that you just have to pay attention to and it's going to jump at you and it's going to have a lot of depth and character, it is the Corey Vrecken. You guys voted 82% to 18%. I'm telling you that both of these will always be in my cabinet as long as they're available because I think they are both great. Depends on what time of uh, day it is or what mood I'm in. So pick the one that's right for your mood, but I wouldn't turn either one of these down. Excellent whiskeys. 
give me your thoughts on uh, the tasting, and I look forward to seeing you next time.